We're gonna be demonstrating the procedure for awake orotracheal intubation using a flexible endoscope. And this procedure starts uh, by coaching the patient in what you're going to be doing. And we'll begin by anesthetizing the mouth and the hypopharynx. We're gonna start with 4% lidocaine uh, cream and a tongue depressor. We're gonna use this to coat the back of the tongue. As the cream uh, dissolves and becomes more liquid, it's gonna um, get down to the vocal cords and the laryngeal structures, which will also help with anesthesia. I'm gonna use the back of the cap. All right, so we have a five gram tube and we're gonna be generous and use all of this for anesthesia. I'm gonna ask my patient to open their mouth and stick out their tongue. I'm gonna to apply this to the back of the tongue without gagging the patient and let this just coat the tongue and get to the back of the throat and the patient can swallow or spit out uh, excess lidocaine. This is a time where the patient can just uh, relax and let that uh, produce anesthesia in the back of the mouth. Even aspirating some of this is okay as it's gonna to add to the uh, depth of anesthesia for the procedure. After the patients had some time to let the lidocaine cream uh, take effect, we next use aqueous lidocaine 4% and a magic atomizer to apply this to the base of the tongue and the hypopharynx. Have our patient open their mouth, stick out their tongue, and I'm gonna put a curve on this atomizer to get behind the tongue and start spraying now. Try to get the perilaryngeal structures there. Patients able to gargle this lidocaine or just allow it to sit near the epiglottis. And then when they're ready, we're gonna apply some more. Now that our patient's adequately anesthetized, we're gonna get ready to instrument the airway. We have a 10 millimeter Williams airway, which is a hard plastic oropharyngeal airway, which is gonna act as the guide for our endotracheal tube. In this case, I'm using a 6.0 um, micro laryngeal flex tip tube. So it does have an extra five centimeters on the end in this case. I'm gonna preload my tube so that the bevel is right at the end of the Williams airway before I insert it in the mouth. And in this case, I'm gonna be uh, maintaining the Williams airway in the midline with the tip of that airway right above the vocal cords while my assistant performs endoscopy and then we intubate the trachea over the scope. So I'll have our patient open their mouth. I'm gonna insert this apparatus right so the bite block is at the teeth. Begin endoscopy here. And again, we have a tube that's lubricated as well as the scope to make everything slide smoothly. We're both watching the screen and I'm positioning the Williams airway right in the midline, right above the epiglottis. Hey folks, Aaron here. I just wanted to do a quick aside to orient people that are maybe a little less familiar with bronchoscopy. Remember that during a bronchoscope introduction into the mouth or into the nose, we're actually facing the patient. So the image is gonna be actually flipped from what we're traditionally used to seeing during laryngoscopy. So here's an image of somebody visualizing the vocal cords using the bronchoscope while you're facing the patient, looking through their mouth around the corner of the tongue. The epiglottis is flipped towards you up against the tongue. The vocal cords are in the middle of the screen. Then you can see the glottic inlet and then the uretinoids are on the top. Contrast that with traditional laryngoscopy, which is seen here. And that is showing the epiglottis up and against the tongue with the blade in the vallecula engaging the ligament and then the uretinoids are below and the cords and the glottis are again seen in the middle of the screen. And now back to the video. With the view of our cords, we'll have our patient inhale deeply. And then when our scope is in the trachea near the carina, we're going to intubate right over it by advancing the endotracheal tube over the scope. Last step, I'll have my assistant retract the endoscope to confirm our tube is in the trachea. At this point, we'll administer sedation for the patient, make them more comfortable. And then the last step to remove the Williams airway from the patient when everything's stable and secured is to take the adapter off of the end of the tube and then remove the Williams over the pilot balloon, replacing the adapter at the end and resuming ventilation.